Okay, here are some more example solves. And uh, again, in this video, I'll be doing two example solves with the cross on white and then three with color neutral crosses. So the first step, I guess, in this solve is to find the white cross pieces and figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I've got this one, this one, this one, this one. And um, the cross is reasonably straightforward. Um, so I should be able to try and plan a little bit of F to L. Um, what I might do is I notice that if I do a U prime R prime F, this edge piece will come into place. So U prime R prime F like that places this edge piece and I've also got this corner piece here. So I can do something like now, well, so the corner piece that belongs with this edge piece is here. If I do a D prime R prime, then it'll come to the top here. Um, and that's probably what I would do actually. I would just do something like that and then insert this corner piece down here by doing R prime U to R, U R prime U prime R, and then finish the keyhole extended across with a D2 like that. And then the first F2L pair that I see is these two. Well, I've got these two, but I don't think they're a very, very good one to solve because if I solve these two, then that'll get, that'll give me two diagonally solved pairs, which is not ideal. But I can solve these two into the back right slot there, which is nice. Then I can solve these two without using a rotation like that. And then I would solve these two in order to orient some edges, some last layer edges, sorry. Now I've got a soon and T permutation. So pretty easy uh, solve. Okay, again, this solve is on the white cross, so I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Um, I've got this piece, this piece, and this one, which I need to place into my cross layer. And I also notice I've got this F2L pair here, which if I do a DL prime, will go up to this position. And then if I solve these two in a specific way, then these two won't be affected overall. So if I do a DL prime, and then if I do U prime, R prime U, R prime F, like that, these two stay over here. So I can do a D, and at the same time as I do a D, I'll do a U, and then start solving my first F2L pair into that back slot. Now, the next F2L pair that I see is these two. So I'd probably prefer to do that without rotating. Now, I, what I want to do is solve the next F2L pair, and I suppose I would go for these two because I can do them in such a way that I can solve them into the back slot here and then I have a little bit of freedom in terms of what I want to do for my last F2L pair. Um, if I do F U R U prime R prime F prime, then that'll misorient an edge, uh, will misorient two edges rather of my last layer. So what I'm going to do is rotate this way and solve the pair like that so I get a, a, a last layer case where I have edges oriented. And here I have a soon, sorry, anti soon, followed by J permutation. Okay, in this scramble, we've got the only side with oriented edges is white. So we've got that, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to solve the cross. Um, we've got this block here, but I don't think. Um, we can, okay, we can do a two by two, but like this. So if we do R, D, R prime, that'll insert this edge back here. So R, D, R prime, D, like that. And then to solve the last two, uh, the last two edges, we can go L, F prime. And I wouldn't see this in a speed solve, but if I was kind of doing fewest moves or something, I could, I would insert this over there first before doing the L2. But let's pretend I'm just doing a speed solve and I didn't see that. So I'll do the L2 and I've got my X cross like that. Then I would, yeah, I'd probably rotate because now in this orientation, all of my edges are oriented. So I can solve these two, put them in the back, do these two, put them in the front, and these two over here. I've got a T and G permutation. So yeah, pretty easy, uh, pretty easy solve.
Okay, looking around the cube on this solve, I see immediately that the green cross has two pieces correctly solved relative to one another, and these two are going to be pretty easy to insert as well. Um, the, the next, I guess, matter of course is to figure out what I'm going to do in terms of my first F to L pair. Um, so I see that if I do a U prime D and then R prime U, R prime F, I'm going to end up with this corner up here and this edge over here. So I can do R prime U, R prime F, and then immediately I can go ahead and solve these two into this position by doing an F, R U two, R prime F prime. Now I've got these two, which I can solve into this back left without a rotation. And I would probably go ahead and solve these two into the back because if I do this back pair like that, I'm going to end up with this as my fourth F to L pair, which is a really bad case if I want to keep it rotationless. So I'll do these two first into the back and then these two. Then I can do OLLCP. And then from this position, I'll do the U perm like this. U and then a U. Okay, let's inspect this cube. Um, immediately I'm drawn to this big yellow block and I'm trying to figure out whether there's something that's practical to do in terms of an X cross. There is, but it's kind of long, so I might not go for that. I might instead go for the uh, the green cross. So I can just do D, R, B prime like that to solve these three, these first three cross pieces. And then now I've got a couple of different options for my first F to L pair. So if I do a U prime, R prime, F, R, then I'm going to get these two pieces um, in a position where I can easily insert them like that. And whilst I was doing that, I saw these two come into place. And then I can do these two like that. And then these two into the back right slot. So that was kind of easy. Now I've got OLL and PLL. So I think that was a rotationless solve. Uh, actually, maybe apart from the cross. Yeah, it was a pretty easy solve.